Happy New Year, artists. It's the 3rd of January, 2024, and we're here for the Maryland State Arts Council's information session on our Grants for Artists program. I'm Chad Buderbaugh. I'm the direct, de Deputy Director of the Maryland State Arts Council. I'm joined by Laura Weiss, Program Director for Art Services, who will be uh, monitoring uh, the uh, enter and uh, exits of uh, various artists who are going to be joining us uh, today to listen. Um, we have a number of uh, grounding slides to get us started. The, the first couple are about our platform, which is Google Meet. If anyone's unfamiliar with Google Meet, uh, the various tools are listed here. Um, the, uh, the most important, I think, for a session this large will be the, the mute button, which is the microphone-shaped button at the bottom of the screen. Please, please stay on mute for the entirety of the meeting uh, with a group this large, we're unfortunately not going to be able to have synchronous conversation. But as questions come up, you can enter them into the chat, uh, which is shown here on this next slide, the little voice bubble. <clears throat> you can enter your questions into the chat box and we'll do our level best to make sure they all get answered before four o'clock. Our other grounding slides uh, have to do with uh, the work and values of the Arts Council, the first of which is our land acknowledgement statement, which I'll read in full, excuse me. <clears throat> we acknowledge the lands and waters now known as Maryland are the home of its first peoples, the Akahanic Indian tribe, Assateague Peoples tribe, Cedarville Band of Piscataway Indians, Choptico Band of Indians, Lenape tribe, Nanticoke tribe, Nasuwewash Band of Indians, Piscataway Kanoi tribe, Piscataway Indian Nation, Pocomoke Indian Nation, Susquehannock Indians, Yakagani River Band of Shawnee, and tribes in the Chesapeake watershed who have seemingly vanished since the coming of colonialism. We acknowledge that this land is now home to other tribal peoples living here in diaspora. We acknowledge the forced removal of many from the lands and waterways that nurtured them as kin. We acknowledge the degradation that continues to be wrought on the land and waters in pursuit of resources. We acknowledge the right of the land and waterways to heal so that they can continue to provide food and medicine for all. We acknowledge that it is our collective obligation to pursue policies and practices that respect the land and waters so that our reciprocal relationship with them can be fully restored. You can learn more about MSAC's land acknowledgement statement and overall project by visiting our website, msac.org, under the resources section. Our equity and justice statements are here. The arts celebrate our state's diversity, connect our shared humanity, and transform individuals and communities. MSAC and its supporting collaborators are committed to advancing and modeling equity, diversity, accessibility, and inclusion in all aspects of our organizations and across communities of our state. MSAC and its grantees are committed to embracing equity and non-discrimination, regardless of race, religious creed, color, age, gender expression, sexual orientation, class, language, and or ability. Our mission is to play an essential role ensuring every person has access to the transformative power of the arts. Uh, our vision, excuse me, our mission is to advance the arts in our state by providing leadership that champions creative expression, diverse programming, equitable access, lifelong learning, and the arts as a celebrated contributor to the quality of life for all the people of Maryland. In 2019, MSAC published a strategic plan, which is still in force for the next six months or so. Uh, the main goals of this strategic plan are listed here in bold text. Uh, you can read the full plan by visiting our site, again, msa.org. Uh, but the five goals are to increase participation, provide intentional support, build capacity, leverage connections, and bolster Maryland arts. While we're in the meeting today, again, we won't really be speaking to one another just because the crowd is so large, but 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 it's all in the, the same generative space. We ask folks to observe these creative meeting actions, to celebrate being in the space with other creative people, engage with everyone's presence as a gift, acknowledge that together we know a lot, enter the conversation with curiosity and inquiry, share your idea and trust that it will be heard, <clears throat> use I statements, Focus your language on the task at hand. Hold one another accountable with care. 
apply yes and, or I hear your idea and I'm going to add to it and balance your speaking and listening. I'm going to make that very easy on you because, again, we're asking you to remain on mute throughout the hour and to type any questions or comments that you have into the chat uh, once we get into the main content. What we're doing today is uh, part of a raft of professional development offerings uh, that MSAC provides on a very regular basis. We have topic-specific sessions of interest to the arts sector formal meet and greets, conversations about particular grant programs, uh, sessions like this, which provide you information on how to apply for a grant program. We also do uh, some in-person events, including office hours, where our staff comes to your area to have conversation, learn about what these are, and uh, an annual convening called the Maryland Arts Summit, which you can learn more about at mdarts.org. Uh, if you have an idea for a professional development session, you can propose it at that email address. And if you haven't already, please sign up for our mailing list, uh, which is linked here and can also be found on our site, msac.org. <clears throat> a great way to get involved with the work of the Arts Council is to serve as uh, a panelist or an editor or a juror. Um, there, there are different ways to basically um, not be employed by the Arts Council, but, but to connect with us and be paid for your work in either evaluating applications, uh, giving a critical review of program guidelines, uh, uh, serving as a juror for uh, various exhibitions. You can learn more about uh, open calls for that kind of work at the uh, URL listed here. Those interested in serving in such capacity will apply in Smart Simple, our online grants management platform. will receive training and support from our staff, and uh, again, will be compensated for their service. So uh, keep in touch and reach out with any questions on that. I think that brings us to our agenda for the Grants for Artists info session. It does. Okay. Well, uh, we've gone through our grounding slides and we're going to spend the next 50, five zero minutes uh, going through a program overview of Grants for Artists, which I'm going to call GFA for the remainder of our chat. Uh, walk through the application together so that you know what to expect in Smart Simple. And then we're going to have a, a question and answer session. Uh, we are going to hold all questions and answers to the, the fourth piece of the agenda here. And once again, we're going to ask you all to remain on mute uh, as, you, as you listen to me give an overview and walk through the application. Uh, but at any time, you can type your question or your comment about GFA into the, the chat area, and we will get through as many of those questions as we possibly can in, in the time that's allotted to us. Uh, finally, we'll reflect on our time together and, and close the session no later than 4 p.m. Uh, so again, wonderful to see you all here. We're up to about to about 121 of you uh, joining us, uh, which tells us we're doing something right. So, so thank you for taking uh, taking time. Again, this is being recorded, so if you need to step away, uh, a, a recording of the session will be on YouTube in the coming days. But on to GFA itself. Uh, MSAC developed this program last year uh, to, to serve artists in the same way that we've served organizations for many years. We give operating grants to organizations. Now with GFA, we're giving operating grants essentially to artists. Operating grants that may be used on working expenses like project work or buying art supplies or updating your website or living expenses, like paying the rent, paying the mortgage, getting your car payments uh, sent in on time. Uh, this year, we are able to offer a $2,500 GFA grant. Some of you who were familiar with the program last year will know that that number is down quite a bit. Last year, we had $40 million in our budget that we don't have this year, and that was pandemic relief funding. So uh, GFA supports working or living expenses with $2,500 grants. The grant cycle is listed here. Applications are open right now. They opened up yesterday, and we've already got a couple of submitted, more than a couple of submitted applications. They will remain open through February 29th. Happy leap year. 
grantees in the GFA program are chosen very differently from other programs. They are chosen at random. So we'll talk more about this in a little while, but applications to GFA are not based on critical evaluation of submitted materials. Like they are in pretty much all other MSAC programs. They are chosen from among all eligible applicants. If you are eligible, you are entered into the same consideration as every other eligible applicant. The next point is that if you received funding through the GFA program in fiscal 23, that would have been right around last time, uh, this, this time last year, then you are ineligible to apply this year. That's because this program is very popular and we want to make sure that we are awarding as broad a base as possible of people. So if you got it last year, you got to take a year off. But there are other MSAC programs for artists that you can look into uh, if you're interested in connecting. If you do receive funds through GFA this year, they must be spent or obligated no later than June 30th, 2024. Spent is easy. You just spend the money and it's gone and you report on it. Uh, obligated is somewhat different. Uh, in some cases you might have, let's say you, you get your $2,500 award and you've got 900 of it left over uh, under June 30th. So in order to remain in compliance with our grant, you need to be able to say that additional $900 that I haven't spent yet is obligated or encumbered or committed toward these particular costs. I will spend it to buy these art supplies that are, let's say, in transit through the mail right now. I will spend it to attend this conference of uh, artists who are working in my field. And you put that into your final report, and that counts as what we call a legal obligation uh, that your, your funds are going to be spent in that way. Um, that's again, that's legally binding. So, uh, so be aware that uh, the term obligation is not, there's not a lot of flexibility there. You've, you've got to spend the money in the way that, that you said you were going to spend it. <laughs> so, uh, those are the basics of the grant cycle. Now eligibility, uh, who, uh, who may receive GFA funds? Well, you have to be a Maryland resident. Uh, you have to be age 18 or older. And the, the funding that you receive through this program has to support work that is unaffiliated with an organization or an entity. Uh, entity is kind of technical language that we use to refer to nonprofit organizations, uh, various uh, units of government, schools, colleges, universities. This work is meant to su support the work of independent artists. So I'll translate that, translate that a little further for you. Um, this does not mean that you have to be like writing alone in a garret and not talking to anybody and completing your work in a total vacuum. All it means is that like, let's say that you're a uh, you have full-time employment in a nonprofit arts organization. You cannot then apply for GFA funding and receive it and use those dollars to support the, the, the arts activities for which you're already drawing a salary. Um, there is also an exception for folks that are working on a, a part-time or limited contractual basis. I know a lot of teaching artists, for example, um, have uh, work with organizations uh, to uh, to be hosting uh, one-off events or uh, be working five or ten or fewer hours a week, um, so so that's okay. GFA funding can support that kind of activity. Um, I see questions beginning to roll in in the chat. That's great. Keep them coming. We'll return to those when we uh, get to the the Q and A session. Um, GFA recipients, as with most MSAC funding recipients, may not be enrolled in any matriculated high school undergraduate or graduate degree programming program. Uh, so if you're, if you're enrolled in classes that lead to a BA or an MA or a PhD, you're unfortunately not eligible here. You may 
on the other hand, be taking some evening classes or auditing some classes, that's okay because those types of things don't lead to uh, a degree. We had some conversation recently about whether like a graduate certificate would be allowable. We, we decided that it would uh, because again, it's not leading to a degree. But if you're enrolled full-time, then, then you're not gonna be eligible here. And then finally, uh, artists need to provide evidence of regular creative practice. That could be a link to a website or social media page. It could be an artistic CV. It could be um, a PDF of media coverage, noting that you are a painter or a composer or a writer, et cetera. Um, along the same lines, it could be uh, JPEGs of, of your work if you're a visual artist. Um, any evidence will do. Uh, and note, too, that this is actually somewhat new this year. Um, we, we no longer are requiring applicants to GFA to have earned on their art in the past. Uh, you, you, you might have never earned dollar number one on, on your art uh, in the past uh, this time around, just as long as you can show us that you have some sort of regular creative practice. That's what we're looking for. Again, I mentioned this earlier, but again, there's no critical evaluation. And a lot of folks get a little confused about this. We noticed last year, just because we're, we're, we're swimming in water that where critical evaluation happens in almost every grant program. Like if you're applying for a grant, you expect someone to say, this one's better than that one, that one's better than this one, this application is better than that one, and so on and so forth. That is not true here. Uh, all we are doing when we review GFA applications is making sure that, again, you're a Maryland resident, you're not enrolled in a degree program, you're not doing this work for an organization on a full-time employment basis, and that you're an artist of some kind. Uh, so so we're, we're not scoring, we're not providing qualitative comments in that way. There is no critical evaluation. This is only based on eligibility. And once again, all eligible applications are moved forward for a random drawing based on the funding that's available. So GFA funds, if you uh, get them, may be uh, used for anything you see here, but it's not necessarily limited to, to this work. I'll, I'll read it out loud slowly just to um, give you a sense of the type of living and working expenses that, that we are supporting here. So any administrative costs you have as an artist, any consultant fees, contractual services, uh, daycare services, entry fees to shows, et cetera, equipment rental, exhibition costs, financial tools, financial planning, food, housing, insurance, studio or workspace costs, materials and supplies, marketing costs, medical costs, payment to technical crews, fabricators, or collaborators, professional memberships, performance costs, production costs, student loans, submission fees for grant or residency applications, travel and transportation, utilities, meaning like, you know, your electric, your internet, your gas, your water, website development, and any other costs associated with independent artists working and living expenses. If, if you don't see your cost on here, my recommendation would be to reach out uh, to me and we can talk through uh, your idea. Um, but it's meant to cast a broad net, and again, it's meant to support the general operating costs of being an artist in Maryland. As with all grant programs, there are a number of uh, ineligible or un rather unallowable costs. Uh, the first of these would be any activities, again, performed as part of regular continuing employment with an entity uh, known as nonprofit organizations, LLCs, institutions, government agencies, etc. We we cannot fund your work in connection with with regular continuing employment at, at these places, except in the situations that I mentioned earlier, um, and we will talk more about that in the Q and A. I'm sure. Uh, GFA does not fund capital improvements or pur purchases of permanent equipment. So no, no the buildings, no, uh, you know, no remodeling, things like, things like that that would kind of be ongoing um, uh, uh, 
structural changes to, to your life as an artist uh, or acquisition of capital assets are not supported here either. <clears throat> GFA funds do not support contributions to any persons who hold or are candidates for elected office, to any political party, organization, or action committee, to any political campaign or referendum, do not support any lobbying activities. Those things are true across the board. Uh, no MSAC funds may be used to support political activities in general, uh, and they're listed here um, in detail. And then finally, uh, GFA funds do not support any expenses for which the applicant has been awarded funds through another MSAC grant program. Um, some of you might be new to MSAC. We offer many different, we offer funding through many different grant programs. So um, if over in the creativity grant program, you're getting funding to support project X, and then you also get a GFA award in the same year, you cannot, you cannot also use GFA funds to support project X. They have to be separated out. Other basic requirements, um, as with all most grant programs, uh, application must be done via Smart Simple, which is uh, MSAC's uh, online grants management system. As part of the application process, you will need to submit a completed W-9 form. The, a link to, to the IRS website is provided in the application, so you can access a W-9 there, fill it out, and upload it. Um, we, we do have um, uh, some confusion sometimes about how do you put on your signature and, and date and then like turn it back into a digital document and scanning and using Adobe Acrobat and all these things. Uh, but our, our team uh, does our best to be helpful in that regard. So as W9 concerns come up, um, just, just try to be in touch. Uh, and then as with all grant programs, there is a report due at the end of the funding period. If you do receive uh, GFA funds, You'll be asked by August 15th of this year to go back into Smart Simple and write down what the experience was like, how you spent the funding, uh, enter some demographic information uh, to help us understand the impact that, uh, that this funding has had. There's more info on the Grants for Artists page uh, of our website, msac.org. Uh, under Programs, you can get to the Grants for Artists page. Uh, and from there, we'll just do a quick application walkthrough. I see questions continuing to come through the chat. Uh, we, will, we will get to those right after our walkthrough. Uh, but once you actually get into Smart Simple, um, uh, well, let's, let's back up one brief step. Smart Simple is a separate um, system from our website. So our website's over here, that's msac.org. That has all the information about our grant programs, guidelines, documents. Uh, Smart Simple is the platform that you go to to actually make an application. Uh, Smart Simple is linked from our website, but they're not the same thing. Um, now, if you are using Smart Simple for the first time, you will have to create an account uh, because you have to create an account for everything these days. And when you go into Smart Simple, uh, you want to register your account as an independent artist. When you are registering, you will have multiple choices about, about how to register. Independent artist is the, is the choice you want to make when you create an account. Once you do that, uh, you'll be able to click on a link that says opportunities. Uh, one of those opportunities will be grants for artists. You click on that and you open a form that starts looking a lot like what we have on the screen now. So that's sort of like the back end of, or the, the front end rather, not actually the front end of, of uh, opening a Smart Simple account. But once you open your Grants for Artists application, you'll see that there's an uh, initial section uh, where some of your contact information is going to be auto populated based on how you registered, um, some county and other contact information. Uh, and then you go into a tab about eligibility. So immediately, three questions. Are you a Maryland resident? What Maryland resident means in this case is have you owned or, or, or rented residential property in Maryland six months prior to this application submission? And are you 18 years of age or older? Yes is the answer that gets you eligibility. 
Are you enrolled in a degree granting high school undergraduate graduate program? No is the answer that gets you eligibility. Uh, and then finally, are you applying for this grant in support of activities that are affiliated with or on behalf of an entity like a nonprofit organization, LLC, institution, government agency, et cetera? No is the eligible answer. If you cannot answer yes, no, no to these three, unfortunately, you're not eligible for the Grants for Artists program and uh, an alert will pop up in Smart Simple uh, to that effect. Next tab is artist details. This is where it gets a little more familiar, I think. Um, first, you select the discipline in which you are regularly making work as an independent artist. The main disciplines in which we are uh, supporting work at MSAC are listed here. There's also another box uh, where you can explain in more detail uh, whether you're involved in a genre or genres that aren't quite captured by the list of options here. Also under artist details, include a brief and basic description of your work as an independent artist and the type of art that you create. You have uh, only a hundred words to do this. I would say that a hundred words is even a pretty long answer. Uh, if you can't do this between 50 and 75 words, then you're probably, you're probably saying a little too much for this particular grant program. So my advice is um, keep it brief, keep it basic, uh, this is not the place to add an artistic statement like you would in a different type of application. Uh, this, is, this is not the place to um, have a conceptual discussion about your work. This is the place to say that, you know, I, I am an oil painter working in landscapes on the eastern shore, and I create works on canvas uh, of particular size. Um, on a regular basis, and that would be sufficient uh, to, to answer this question. Uh, the final prompt under artistic details um, is about proof of your work as an artist. So it says, in what form, site and or upload, would you like to provide proof of your status uh, or work as an independent artist? So you can either select there uh, that you'll link to a website or social media page. If you check that, there will be a little space to, to move us over there to your, to your site or your Instagram or whatever it is. Uh, or you can select upload materials. You get a little upload button and you can put in your, your artistic uh, CV or a JPEG of your work or um, uh, even a document that maybe links us to a, a YouTube page if you're say a musical artist. Uh, but that's that's uh, it, really. Um, there are other uh, tabs here. There's um, oh, excuse me. No, we do have one more tab to go through. Excuse me. Yeah, financial information. Um, briefly describe how you would use uh, grants for artist funding. So, uh, for your reference, all of the eligible uses from the guidelines are also listed here, uh, and uh, you can just kind of. Uh, read through them and give give a basic uh, give a basic answer. Um, if you put down anything that kind of alludes to the ineligible costs that I went over a couple minutes ago, then you'll unfortunately be marked ineligible for for this funding. Um, and if there are gray areas, again, reach out through it. All right. Now we get to Q&A. Well, I'll go back briefly. We see attachments, electronic signatures here. Um, attachments is where you're gonna upload your W-9, and there are a couple of basic questions about your W-9, like yes and no drop-down answers uh, that you have to uh, uh, make sure are, are filled out before moving forward. Electronic signature is where you just basically put your name down and the date uh, to certify your application. Um, electronic signatures are legally binding, so, you know, make sure that everything you enter is, is true to the best of your knowledge uh, to avoid any uh, issues down the road. Internal, you won't need to deal with. Um, okay, now we get to Q&A, and now I crack my knuckles and open up the chat and um, see if we can just scroll all the way back up here and, and get through as many of these questions as we can. Oh, there's not a, not a huge, huge amount. Um, how many $2,500 grants will be given out uh, this year? 
I, I think it's going to be somewhere in the 220s. Could you give a definition of a Maryland resident and who exclude? Uh, a Maryland resident, as, as mentioned a couple slides ago, is someone who's been owning or renting real property in the state for six months prior to the time of application. Anyone not in that group would be excluded. Uh, Valerie Pickett asks, when would grant awardees receive the grant if the money needs to be spent by uh, the end of June this year? It all depends on how many applications we get. Uh, last year, we got 1,900 applications, and we had to spend about five weeks reviewing them all, um, which which actually didn't leave a ton of time for folks to get their get their funding. If we receive fewer applications this year, then announcements could go out sooner. Uh, if we receive more, we might get pushed a little bit into the into the future. Um, what's certain in any case is that grant applications will be open through February 29th and we'll be uh, working on reviews forward from that date. Do GFA funded activities have to take place in Maryland? Not necessarily. Sometimes you would need to uh, go to a convening or a conference or, or do work outside the state um, in order to advance and further your artistic career. The main thing is that um, even if you are doing work out of state, that it is somehow benefiting your career as an independent artist in the state, that you're not going to be planning on moving or relocating, or like, let's say you're not in a situation where you maintain multiple homes and you're in your Portland, Maine home 10 months out of the year, then that's not really a good fit for this program. We're really looking to support folks that are, are in Maryland, doing work in Maryland, Maryland a majority of the time, and who are sometimes, you know, sending work out to be shown at exhibitions elsewhere or, or that kind of thing. If supplies are covered, is equipment also covered? Yes, unless it's kind of like permanent equipment, the line there is gray. I understand if you have questions, uh, Kathy, about what counts as permanent equipment and what doesn't, uh, we can speak offline about that. But again, this is not intended as a capital uh, support program. Hope, uh, does the school limitation include low residency or non full time graduate program? Uh, it, it covers. Uh, uh, yes, yes, it does. But uh, but only in the case where a degree is is being sought by the applicant. If a degree is not being sought, then you're okay to apply. Kathy, what if you're taking one to two classes a semester that may eventually lead to a degree? Again, if a degree is in the offing, the the this or or in the intentions, this is probably not the best fit. Uh, user Wing Desire Arts, this is a great opportunity for new artists. What is your advice to artists new to applying for grants? Well, this being in this session is a good one. Um, I would say in the case of MSAC in particular, um, developing a relationship via email and phone and getting to know your various program directors <clears throat> is also a good one. Um, it's true we are very busy. It's true that we are trying to help a lot of people across the state, but it's those who kind of um, make themselves known to us most frequently on a regular basis that, that have strong chances, not, not of getting grants any more than anyone else, but of beginning to understand the, the operations and the procedures of the Arts Council in a way that you might not understand uh, if you don't take it upon yourself to do things like attend these sessions and send emails to folks. Uh, remember, too, that I'm only one staff member of 14 or 15. It's more than that, actually. So look through that staff list and uh, think about fo other folks that you might want to reach out to about the grant programs that they oversee. Uh, Deborah Davis, how do we show results of our work if it's not finished by the end of the fiscal year? This is not a project grant. This is an operating grant. So nothing has to be finished by June 30th. You could get $2,500 in funding and say, I'm going to spend absolutely all of it on art supplies and, and not do any art, uh, theoretically, before the end of the fiscal year. And that would be fine for this program. It would not be fine for other programs, but it's fine for this program. Douglas Draper Jr., can you apply if you have fiscal sponsorship? You don't need fiscal sponsorship as long as you're a Maryland resident. Uh, you would you would apply as yourself, as an individual, uh, an independent artist um, living and working in Maryland. Uh, Jessica Hansen, is there a submission fee? No, we would never do that to you. Kathy, workshops for continuing education. Yes, those would be supported through the Grants for Artists. 
uh, program, I would also recommend that you look at another MSAC funding opportunity called the Professional Development Opportunity Grant. The Professional Development Opportunity Grant that also supports uh, things like continuing education. Alyssa White, how is the random, random drawing done? Will it be run through a system? Uh, yes, it will be run through a system. We use an algorithm to basically take all of the IDs from the uh, eligible submissions. Um, and uh, we have someone who is um, not directly affiliated with the Grants for Artists program uh, run the algorithm to, to give us our grant recipients. And we also have a member of um, senior leadership outside the Arts Council observe and certify the process. Jimmy, what if you are an what if you are affiliated with an org but as an independent contractor, not a full time employee? Then you are eligible. Brian Dunn, can grant money be used for studio renovation? Can funds be used? I think that's a half sentence there. Can grant money be used for studio renovation? It feels a bit like a capital cost. I would say no, just based on this question. But if you want to talk more about that, please email me and uh, we can we can get into the weeds a bit. Marta, hello. Do you have a way to verify art presented electronically is indeed the work of the applicant? Uh, we, we trust our uh, electronic signature to um, cover that kind of scenario. It is legally binding. Uh, if you are submitting work, not your own, uh, into this portal and you are signing your name on it, then, then you, are, you are doing so under the knowledge that you're, you're legally attesting to something that's false. So I would not recommend that you do that, obviously. Um, that could lead to some very um, sticky issues down the road. Uh, Ann Wheeler, on the W-9, can you use social security number if you do not have a business license? If you have a business license, you're not, if you have a business license, you cannot use it to apply to this program. Um, this program does not support organizations. It supports individuals only. So uh, on the W-9s, every, every eligible applicant is going to be using a social uh, in order to, to move forward. Again, um, we, we do not support organizations through this grant. We have other grant programs that support organizations, but not this one. Do these grants apply to nonprofits operating on less than 20K? Uh, no, nonprofits are not eligible for this, for this program. Christopher Walsh, for resident eligibility, what if you live with relatives and don't pay rent? Uh, it, it would, it would we, we certainly would not exclude you if you're not uh, um, paying rent, but living in a family home and you meet all of the other eligibility requirements. Uh, you are a Maryland resident, uh, sort of covered, I suppose, under the ownership of, of those who have the DD or property. Bianca, how many files do we need to submit to show evidence of creative practice? Uh, one or more. Um, a team, is there a limit on the number of pages for an artistic CV? No, but the the longer the CV, the, the, the longer it's going to take the Arts Council to review all the applications and, and process the grants. Uh, keep it complete, but keep it brief is my recommendation. Margie, these are grants. These grants are for individual independent artists, not groups like Corral Groups. Yes, that's correct. Uh, Deborah, I'm in the literary arts. Will the content of the document I sent be kept confidential? Yes. Uh, well, it'll be seen by MSAC staff, but but beyond that, it'll be kept confidential. Uh, Jill Warzer, which category applies if you create craft? Some of, if you create a craft, some of which is reflective of traditional art practice, and some of which is not. Uh, you would, uh, Jill. I have, I happen to know uh, where this might be going. Uh, for everyone on that, on that slide back here, where you're selecting your genre. You don't have to click just one. So if you're if you're partly traditional and partly visual, you, you would click traditional arts and visual arts, um, just as you would you would click uh, media and uh, theater uh, if if that if that's what applies to you. And then if you want to explain further, you could click the other uh, piece here and and talk a little more about how um, <clears throat> how your uh, work is multidisciplinary in nature. Uh, Amy, would a student graduating this coming may be eligible? No. Uh, Becca, is an influencer or content creator, digital media, or their niche? 
in effect, I make theater content. If you're making theater content, then then you're covered. I'm not sure I totally understand the influencer content creator digital media piece. Um, we, we do support media arts, certainly. Um, you, you may click media and theater potentially on your application. Um, if, if you want to rephrase, though, I'd be happy to try and give that one another whack uh, in the chat. Diana, can you apply for multiple needs, like a bookkeeper and social media marketing services? Uh, yes. Although that wouldn't really change. I mean, you would put down uh, in your application that, um, sorry, I'm just real. I'm just, hi, Diana. <laughs> um, uh, you you would you would only put into your application that I plan to spend this funding on hiring a bookkeeper and hiring a social media marketing consultant to help me out. You wouldn't have to do anything differently. And yes, funds could absolutely support those two things. Uh, Jessica, when it was said that ineligible uses of funds would be purchase of permanent equipment, what does that mean exactly? Are supplies considered permanent equipment? Supplies are, are not considered permanent equipment or they have not been in this program in the past. I'm gonna actually um, cite my colleague Laura on this um, when when we're thinking about permanent equipment. Uh, and I think Laura actually heard it somewhere else, but, but anyway, um, that's how these things get around. When we think about permanent equipment, I think that everything Everything that's in a building where art is being made. And if you pick the building up and you shake it, anything that's not permanent is going to fall out to the ground. Anything that is permanent is going to stay in the building. So, I mean, that's kind of like a funny tongue in cheek way of answering the question. Uh, but because there is some gray area, I think it's also useful. It's a useful starting point for beginning to think about permanent equipment, capital costs, uh, temporary equipment, disposable equipment. So start there, Jessica, and if you have more questions, you can reach out and we can have more conversation. Um, Becca, same answer. Kathy, can you clarify not being able to use the money to, that's another equipment question. So, so it looks like I probably have a few emails coming my way and uh, in a lot of cases, these are gonna be, we're gonna get to the bottom of this through individual conversations. So um, I will return your emails as soon as I can. Uh, Jabeen, last year, if you didn't make the first cut, your application was automatically included in the second round. Will there be two rounds again this year? Jabeen, no, there will not. There will be only one round, uh, one round of uh, application openings this year. And that's between now and the application deadline of February 29th. Uh, Dr. Wash, 08, will the rejected applicants receive notification and the reason for the rejection? Um, yes, but the reason for the for the rejection would be pretty generic. It, uh, if you have further questions after receiving that notice, you can be in touch and we can help you out. A team, is storytelling included? Yes. Stephanie, can the grant go toward residency outside of Maryland? Theoretically, it, it could. Um, in situations like that, the, the strategy that I often tell folks, like, because that starts getting tricky, right? Like if we want to send a Maryland artist to California to do a residency, it, it definitely supports the career of the Maryland artist. Is it rich enriching the merit, the landscape of the arts in Maryland? Yeah, maybe. In situations like that, what I often tell people is that if you want to go and do a residency in California and you've got this money coming in from the GFA program, it would be better just to use this money to say and say in your application, I'm going to spend it on my mortgage in Maryland, my medical costs in Maryland, my food in Maryland for X months. And then that theoretically would free up other money for you to go and do the thing in California. So that's just a bit of advice. You can take it or leave it, but that's one way to kind of write around things. C. Murphy, can money go toward workshops at places like folk and craft schools, open works, other craft related workshops? Yes. <clears throat> April has a deadline question, yes, there is only one deadline. Diana, are camera lights considered permanent equipment? I, I don't think so. I mean, I don't think so. We can talk more about it um, offline, uh, but but that begins to be the, the sort of thing. That, I mean, in your situation, those camera lights might be make, helping you directly to do your work, to create art. You know, that's different than from, from saying like, I'm replacing the windows or I'm building a new wall in my studio or something. But But again, we can talk more offline. 
Uh, Alicia, can funds cover expenses related to childcare caretaking? Yes. Mary, can I teach an after school program part time, but also work as an independent artist needing materials for my own projects? Yes, absolutely. Uh, Aaron, can a photographer be eligible if they're running a photography business and serving clients? Or does it have to be a specific visual art project that they're working on? Uh, yeah. A photographer can be eligible, but the, the grants for artist funds cannot support the photography business. They can't be operating costs that are be, being poured directly back into the business. Um, so it sounds like we might have to have a, a little more conversation to, to get to the bottom of that. Again, this is meant to, to support the, um, the independent artist activities that you're doing separately from an organization. Can funds for a craft art newsletter that is national eligible um i'm not sure i understand the question uh we 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 could support the creation of a newsletter if it's if it's supporting an independent artist if it's a newsletter for an organization then it could not be supported under this program uh there's an eligibility notification question uh yes yes you'll you'll all all applicants will be notified of their status as part of the review Anne asks, can you use the grant, for example, an art and craft rental space charges $50 a month to use their machines? Does this qualify? Uh, yes, those would be working costs. Uh, Becca, can we put the application, can we put the application link in the chat, please? Uh, certainly. Actually, Laura, if you wouldn't mind putting the link to Smart Simple um, in, in the chat, I'd be grateful. Um, Katie, can you use this to buy a new laptop for digital art, such as using such as using art programs like Photoshop or Eclipse Studio Paint? Uh, if, if you're a digital maker, um, uh, then yes, uh, that would that would seem to be eligible. Oh, Emily put the professional development opportunity grant link in the chat. Thank you for that, uh, Dr. Wash. Where will we be able to access this recording, and may we share it with other artists residing in Maryland? It'll be on YouTube, Maryland State Arts Council's YouTube, in the coming days. And yes, you may share it. Uh, and can you use the funds for arts and crafts place the life? Okay, we already got to that one. Do you have resources on how to do an artist CV or resume? Uh, no, I, I, I mean, yes and no. Um, we, we certainly couldn't go too far into it today. Um, if you don't have one right now, but you do have work samples, then maybe work samples would be a better choice for your application. Um, apart from that, there are uh, certainly uh, artists uh, support uh, and professionalization groups uh, around the state. We, we've we worked with Artist U in the past, um, uh, Artists and the Letter U. Um, if there are others that my colleagues can think of on the fly, feel free to put those into the chat. Um, oh, Grace has uh, kind of responded to, to uh, Wing Desire Arts. So that's great. You're talking to one another. That's great. Um, sole proprietors are eligible, correct? Sole proprietors are eligible as long as they're not incorporated as an LLC. I know that sole proprietor is um, is a, le a legal designation that um, can can be a bit fluid. Um, but uh, yeah, if it's just a, a non and unincorporated sole proprietor, that's okay. To be clear, this opportunity is in no way, shape, or form for college students. It is not for those seeking degrees through high school, undergraduate, or graduate programs. Uh, Amanda, I have a business. I'm a sole proprietor, which I have to sell my artwork, collect taxes, et cetera. I'm an independent jewelry designer and goldsmith. You mentioned organizations don't apply, but I don't really consider my business an organization. I'm a working artist. Can you explain? We we don't support um, LLCs through this program. Uh, we don't support uh, non nonprofits through uh, this program. If you are a sole and uh, proprietor who is not incorporated as an LLC, you are eligible to uh, apply. Uh, <laughs> Laura, thanks. Uh, Theodore, does the financial information section need to have an itemized number noted next to items? You may include that, but it's not required. Uh, Stephanie, if one got a creativity grant or a professional development grant, I'm assuming that's what that refers to, professional development in 2023, can one still apply for GFA in 2024? Yes. Um, Bonnie, do you know how much money will be offered for next year's grant? Uh, no. <laughs> we, we'd love to keep it as high as possible, but uh, no, we, we don't know yet, unfortunately. 
Can an independent professional illustrator use money on a graphic novel? Yes. Uh, thank you, Laura, for putting the smart, simple piece in there. Uh, Christine, as a freelance writer of creative nonfiction, is it possible to apply for support for novel in progress work, which is unsupported, for residency submissions and website development for that work? I think I understand the question. The answer is yes. Um, laptop, okay, got it, got it. What category for woodworking? Visual, uh, traditional, maybe if it's if it's a traditional cultural uh, cultural uh, expression. Um, can a dance artist choreographer use funds to put together a dance performance? Uh, yes, I should think th think so. As long as uh, that choreographer's work is uh, outside the work of uh, of an organization. Novelist, can we submit documents instead of manuscripts as proof of creative work? World building documents instead of manuscripts as proof of creative work. I don't see why not. Um, I don't see why not. Can funds be used to create a website or pay someone to help? Yes. How many grants will be awarded this year? Again, we're looking at about 220 or so. Uh, my medium is fashion design. I teach fashion design and visual arts independently to youth and underserved communities. Would I be eligible? As long as you're doing it independently and as long as the fashion design that you're teaching is teaching folks the not not the industrial side of fashion where you you do a design and it gets replicated thousands of times but rather the work of creating unique and independent fashions um, that that are kind of one of a kind that would bring things more toward the artistic side um, thank you for the opportunity you're welcome can funds be used for expenses already paid for it's only for future expenses yeah brian this this grants for future expenses only more gratitude. You're all very welcome. You're all very welcome. Um, Katie, uh, laptops would 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 seem to be allowable in in most cases uh, if they're a tool that you use to, for example, create digital art, or maybe you're using pro pro tools to compose music. Uh, if you have detailed questions, we can be in touch offline. Uh, lots of gratitude, lots of gratitude. Oh my goodness, we got to the end. We have six whole minutes left. So um, I have a little dry mouth, so I'm gonna address that. And I'll just hang around for a minute um, in order to answer questions. Um, Brian, no, you don't have to itemize expenses. Betty, if it's possible to, to put your question in the chat, that would be helpful. I see, I see raised hands. If you can, if you can put your questions in the chat, how many applications you typically get? We got 1,900 last year. We were able to fund approximately 15% of all eligible. A uh, question about when to contact us. Uh, regular business hours. Uh, I work 8 to 4. There are others who work like 8.30 to 4.30, 9 to 5. But regular business hours, Monday through Friday, is, is, when, we are, is when we are here. Um, could I go over the LLC part again? Yes, I could. Um, LLCs are, are for-profit enterprises. And uh, currently, no MSAC program funds for-profit for -profit enterprises. Um, and, and so in the context of this program, um, I guess it theoretically may be possible that you have an LLC or you're doing artistic work over here. Let's say you're a photographer and you have a photography LLC, but then you're also a painter and you're just doing painting on the side for your mental health to decompress, to do something different. Uh, and you don't have an LLC attached to that painting work, then you would be eligible to apply for grants for artist funds to support the painting, but not the LLC. Um, I feel like I saw a couple more questions. Uh, yes, Ryan Sage, website development is fine. Um, can you show a picture of the application website? I suppose so. So there were some, there were some screenshots earlier in this presentation. 
that show the website, but the landing page for the Smart Simple portal is here. That's marylandarts.smartsimple.com, <clears throat> which was shared earlier in the chat. And if you're coming here for the first time, you would need to register a new account. So you'd click register and you'd say, I, am, I want to apply, I am applying as. In this case, you're applying as an independent artist. And then from there, you put in all of your, your first name, last name, social, country, state, et cetera. And then you have your new account from there. Um, do we mail in the application or submit it online? You submit it online. Will you send out a recording of this webinar? Uh, yes, we probably, uh, yes. It, I just check the MSAC uh, YouTube account in the coming days uh, to, to make sure that recording is up. Our application is open right now. Yes, they are. You apply at uh, marylandarts.smartsimple.com which again is shown here. Please share the email address for an offline question. Thank you, Shiva. I'll do that right here. I'm putting my name and email address in the chat. And then you can also find uh, contact information for myself and all of our staff on our website, msac.org. Thank you, Laura and Emily, for sharing those links. Uh, yeah, Theodore, potentially on the filmmaking question. Uh, again, when we start, if you, if you find yourself starting to think too hard about locations in Maryland or out of Maryland, just kind of tilt your perspective to say, I want to apply for GFA funding to support my rent in Maryland, my food in Maryland, my car payments in Maryland. And if you get money to support that stuff, it'll theoretically open up other money that you already have for supporting these other uh, endeavors. Um, yes, Aaron, to the documentary question. And request your address on the w9 I, I don't believe you need to fill that out if i'm incorrect kathy you can correct me um and it's four o'clock but sorry kathy that's correct Mike. that's correct you don't have to fill that out a team um sorry to interrupt <laughs> it's four o'clock uh thank you uh everyone for being here there's 68 of you left um i expect some email a lot of email in the coming days We'll get your questions answered. We have about eight weeks before the deadline, so there's no great rush. This is a very short application. Uh, thanks for all you do in Maryland. You really, you make this state very special with the work that you do as artists. So we appreciate you. And uh, again, this recording will go up on YouTube in a couple of days. Have a good one.